It's good to be with everyone this morning on this beautiful morning and welcome to anybody here who's visiting at Sacred Heart. I see a lot of new faces. We have so many new families coming to our parish and welcome if you're visiting, come often, come to our liturgies and uh, pray with us, pray with us and just be at peace. So every fourth Sunday of Easter, the church throughout the world celebrates Good Shepherd Sunday. And many of the early Christian artists chose the image of the Good Shepherd to depict Christ. Not other images like the risen Christ or Christ crucified on the cross or, or that, that sort of thing. The earliest image of Christ is of a Good Shepherd, and it is on the walls of St. Callisto catacomb in Rome. Just saying St. Callisto was a deacon, just kind of putting that out there for all of you. First image, first image. You can go see it yourself in Rome. Beautiful. So this is very important. Many images of the Good Shepherd throughout the entire scripture. Very, very significant. What is meant to give us great comfort today, I think, as I was reflecting on the scripture, the gospel today, is, is the line from the gospel from a God who loves us with unconditional and infinite love. He does. Here it is. I am the good shepherd. I know mine and mine know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father and I will lay down my life for the sheep. The one aspect of which there were so many in, in this gospel that I'd like to draw our attention to is this, is this, is this. Do we hear Jesus speaking to us? Do we recognize the voice of the good shepherd? I think that's what it comes down to today. So that's what I want to key into. Jesus wants us to recognize his voice and then just simply give him space in our life. It's not complicated so that we can know, come to know and love and serve him in this life and be forever with him in the next. That should be familiar to all of you seniors out there from the old Baltimore Catechism. That's a, that, was, that was something that we all memorized. And many of you know that um, I'm a dentist. And um, as a priest, our priests are the shepherds of our souls, Father Joe and Father Pat. They are the shepherd... Uh, of our souls, and I am the shepherd of Father Joe's teeth. <laughs> and as all of you know, when you go to the dentist, even Father Joe, I have to make him bite down every once in a while on a cot roll. I usually stick about five or six in his mouth. Or, and then, uh, but during that procedure, you have to hold still, and you have to be quiet. I was just thinking of that. All my patients are quiet during that period of time. And this image kept coming back to me in a weird way as I, was, as I was praying over the gospel, and it occurred to me that we have to do that as well. We have to be silent and still if we are to hear his voice. And it's when we are intentionally silent and still that we have the best opportunity to hear God. But this is very hard to do in the, all of the noise-filled world that we live in. In our quiet, we need to allow the voice of the Good Shepherd to be amplified, amplified. Then, when his voice is amplified, do we begin to live our life in and through him. During our last Becoming Catholic session, which I can't believe we had 35 new Catholics come into this church, the greatest number in the diocese for the talk up in Cleveland. Uh, what's going on down there in Wadsworth? It's so wonderful. Um, Father Pat outlined during our last session the needs and reasons for our new baby Catholics that help us grow and to hear and to, and to love and to serve not only Christ the Good Shepherd, but each other. And I think they apply to this uh, hearing his voice, hearing his voice. So let me, let me just run through a couple of them here. First, to hear his voice, you have to develop a relationship with his mother and his father, Mary and Joseph. You have to. Joseph will guide and protect as a father does. We, we heard it in the second reading, we are beloved sons and daughters of God. Mary is the mother of the church. 
Let her teachings, let her and the teachings of the church protect you. She will protect you. Your mother, the church, wants to care for you. You don't have to figure this out on your own. Second, to hear his voice, we need to be nourished. All of us need to be nourished. Nourish your minds, nourish your minds. Download the Hallow app. If you haven't, that's one of the greatest apps out there now, if not the greatest Catholic app, prayer app. Let your relationship develop with God in prayer. That's how you're gonna hear his voice, in prayer. And our faith, this, this faith we have is so beautiful, is extraordinarily rich. I'm still learning too. I learn too every year, every year when we have our Becoming Catholic series and just every week, every week. To be nourished and to hear him, we also need to feast on the bread of angels. We have to feast on it. The Eucharist is absolutely critical. We need to receive love incarnate at every single Mass. That's what we're receiving. You will die spiritually without the Eucharist. And finally, to hear his voice, we need each other. Let's face it, we need each other. We need to gather as the body of Christ and walk this journey on the desert road. No one gets to heaven alone. No one. We are his lambs carried upon his shoulders when we're broken, unable to do it. When we hear his voice, it is then that we are able to carry others who need it, need it the most. I want to leave you with one moment of grace in my life as I was preparing. Um, Maybe you've had a moment of grace in your life when you've just felt the overwhelming presence and awesome of, of God. I've only had a couple in my life, and this is one of them. And I think this, um, I say this to give you hope. I also say that this um, because it ties into hearing his voice. So it was Easter morning mass 2020. Um, it was just Father Joe and I and Sue and Eric and Father Spicer uh, the pews were still, had the tape on them, and no one was here, and we live-streamed the Mass. That was the first Easter Mass that we live-streamed. Don't ever want to go back to that time. Said Mass, it was the 8 o'clock Mass, and then after Mass, um, it just, I, I, I don't know how I felt. I felt, I tried to feel joyful that day. So, I went out to my car, and I got in the car, and I looked at my phone, and I had a text from an old friend of mine, uh, one of my classmates from dental school, one of my best buddies. I haven't seen him in six years. I hadn't talked to him in six years. He lives in Seattle. And they're three hours, we're three hours ahead of them. And many of you know I lost my wife in 2009, right after I was ordained. And um, Felix, and, Felix and Molly, they were just, they were two peas in a pod. I mean, we would go out to, to parties and stuff, and I'd find them off dancing in the corner somewhere, and they were just, they knew how to live it up. So Felix and Molly. So anyways, I looked down at the text, and Felix, he, could, he, could have, he sent me this text, and it said, Happy Easter. He said, I just awoke from the most vivid dream of Molly. It's so wonderful. It could have happened any other day of the year. It happened while I was at Mass. Everything he said was true. He is alive. She is alive. All of this is true. All of it. The Eucharist. All of the teachings. Everything. I just about came unglued. I called a bunch of my friends and everyone that would listen. I, I said, you're never going to believe this. I share this with you to bring you real hope. Real hope because this is real. This is real. His voice is real. God is not going to take away the dangers that surround us in our lives. Whatever they may be, God who sent the Holy Spirit gives us what we need when we need it. If you allow me, Christ says, I will fight for you. You need not fear. 
I am the good shepherd. Listen to my voice. Allow my voice to be amplified in your life. Have hope. I wrote you a book. I gave you a church. I will fight the enemy for you. I will lay down my life for you. Just let me love you. Don't worry or fear what is, what is to come next. Live with hope. Just live the resurrection.